As we walk in your ways, God, we receive your friendship with humility, gratitude. We could not stand without you.
Hello, I'm Denise Knight. I'm from Ballarat and I'm here to share my faith in Jesus Christ. We just heard Travis Cottrell with In Christ Alone and that's the only place where we have solid hope. Today I want to talk about eternal life and eternal life is only found in Jesus Christ. And we're promised in Romans chapter 6 that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's also spoken about in 1 John chapter 5 where he says, Anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. It sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? So what is eternal life? Well, it's not just this life going on forever, because this world is being destroyed by sin. This life is fleeting, and we're mortal beings. It's finite now because since the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, we've been born of Adam, born with a sinful nature. And it's not what we do, but it's what we are. What we do is only the consequence of what our natural instincts are, because we're sinners. Because Satan deceived Adam and Eve into believing him and doubting God. And human beings have been dying ever since. But God so loved the world that he gave his only son to become the son of man, a human being, to live a sinless life as Jesus of Nazareth. The Holy Son of God made flesh. It is hard to believe the lengths that God has gone to to redeem us. And there's none of us that are worthy of such great love. The sinless Son of Man, dying and suffering in our place so that he could overcome Satan's plan to destroy us and the power of the grave. But Jesus has opened up the way for all of us to have eternal life in the kingdom of God. He's freed us from the bonds of the flesh. Jesus has defeated Satan and death through the power of the resurrection, through the power of his love. So the most important thing is that we belong to Jesus Christ, that we know him as our Lord and Saviour. So I'm going to take a break now and let's hear Don Francisco, that I may know you. Everything I've ever wanted only held me back from what I see in you. Wonders of your love are far beyond what anyone could own or do. And if I tried all through forever, I could never earn the treasure that's in store. But now standing in your righteousness, I reach in faith and cry to you for more.
My goal cannot be reached as long as this old sinful flesh remains alive. Till I leave the past behind Like a runner For the prize that lies ahead And I press onward toward the goal The upward call The resurrection from the dead That I may know you The power of your resurrection you enjoyed that lovely song and when you hear the words of Jesus that he said in the gospel of John chapter 17 and this is eternal life that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent then you can see the importance of really knowing Jesus Christ personally as your personal Lord and Saviour it's not just enough to know about him It's not just enough to study about him, but to trust him with your life and know him as your dearest and closest friend. And when we look at the state of the world today, it's not hard to see that we are coming to the end of the world, that Jesus will be coming back soon. Because everything around us, the signs of the times, the state of the world, the moral decline, the lack of conscience... There's a lack of respect for parents and any form of authority. And what about the lack of honour for God? Lack of faith in his love and his promises. And even the lack of faith in his existence. Even though creation cries out as a witness to the uncomprehendable power and glory of God. But God has told us in the Holy Scriptures that in the time of the end, people will be rushing to and fro, and that's definitely happening now. It has also told us that there will be an increase in knowledge, and that's definitely happening now. There will be an increase in natural disasters, and there's disasters everywhere, all over the world, 
one after the other at the moment. And it also says that men's hearts will be failing them. This is the fear and the panic in the world today. It's causing so much depression, anxiety, stress, and look at the increase in suicides and the aggression and anger that's leading to a terrible crime. So any security that we have in worldly things, like a home, possessions, family, a job, freedom, health, wealth, or any happiness, as enjoyable and as precious as all of these things are, there's not one of them that we can't lose in an instant. Even our own life, there's nothing secure in this life, only Jesus Christ. But the security that we have in Him, it's permanent, even when everything else is gone. And Jesus is coming soon, and I'd like to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where it talks about what's going to happen when Jesus comes. He says, I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true, death has been swallowed up in victory. And that victory is the victory that Jesus won for us when he died on the cross. This verse is speaking about the first resurrection, the resurrection of the people who belong to Jesus Christ. But there are two resurrections. The rest of the dead will be resurrected at a later time. And I encourage you to make sure that you will be in that first resurrection because it's the resurrection from death to eternal life, to be in the presence of our loving and faithful God and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And believe me, you don't want to be in the second resurrection, because in the second resurrection there is no hope. So I'd like to leave you today with that thought that the only solid thing in this life is Jesus Christ, and to trust Him with your life. And I'm leaving you with a beautiful song praising our wonderful God, King of Kings. So I hope you enjoy it. Bye for now. Thank you.